About five years ago, I lived downtown in a major city in the U.S. I've always been a night person, so I would often find myself bored after my roommate, who was decidedly not a night person, went to sleep. To pass the time, I used to go for long walks and spend the time thinking. I spent four years like that, walking alone at night, and never once had a reason to feel afraid. I always used to joke with my roommate that even the drug dealers in the city were polite. But all that changed in just a few minutes of one evening. It was a Wednesday, somewhere between 1 and 2 in the morning. I was walking near a police patrol park quite a ways from my apartment. It was a quiet night, even for a weeknight, with very little traffic and almost no one on foot. The park, as it was most nights, was completely empty. I turned down a short side street in order to loop back to my apartment when I first noticed him. At the far end of the street on my side was the silhouette of a man dancing. It was a strange dance, similar to a waltz, but he finished each box with an odd forward stride. I guess you could say he was dance walking, headed straight for me. Deciding he was probably drunk, I stepped as close as I could to the road to give him the majority of the sidewalk to pass me by. The closer he got, the more I realized how gracefully he was moving. He was very tall and lanky and wearing an old suit. He danced closer still until I could make out his face. His eyes were wide open and wild, head tilted back slightly, looking off at the sky. His mouth was formed in a painfully wide cartoon of a smile. Between the eyes and the smile, I decided to cross the street before he danced any closer. I took my eyes off of him to cross the empty street. As I reached the other side, I glanced back, and then stopped dead in my tracks. He had stopped dancing and was standing with one foot in the street, perfectly parallel to me. He was facing me but still looking forward, smile still wide on his lips. I was completely and utterly unnerved by this. I started walking again, but kept my eyes on the man. He didn't move. Once I put about half a block between us, I turned away from him for a moment to watch the sidewalk in front of me. The street and the sidewalk ahead of me were completely empty. Still unnerved, I looked back to where he had been standing to find him gone. For the briefest of moments, I felt relieved, until I noticed him again. He had crossed the street and was now slightly crouched down. I couldn't tell for sure due to the distance and the shadows, but I was certain he was facing me. I looked away from him for no more than ten seconds, so it was clear he had moved fast. I was so shocked that I stood there for some time staring at him, and then he started moving toward me again. He took giant, exaggerated, tiptoed steps as if he were a cartoon character sneaking up on someone, except he was moving very, very quickly. I'd like to say at this point I ran away or pulled out my pepper spray or my cell phone or anything at all, but I didn't. I just stood there, completely frozen as a smiling man crept toward me. And then he stopped again, about a car length away from me, still smiling his smile, still looking to the sky. When I finally found my voice, I blurted out the first thing that came to mind. What I meant to ask was, What the heck do you want? In an angry, commanding tone. What came out was a whimper. What the... Regardless of whether or not humans can smell fear, they can certainly hear it. I heard it in my own voice, and that only made me more afraid. He didn't react to it at all. He just stood there smiling. And then after what felt like forever, he turned around very slowly and started dance walking away. Just like that. Not wanting to turn my back to him again, I just watched him go until he's far enough away to be almost out of sight. And then I realized something. He wasn't moving away anymore, nor was he dancing. I watched in horror as the distant shape of him grew larger and larger. He was coming back my way, and this time he was running. I ran too. I ran until I was off of the side road and back onto a better lit road with sparse traffic. Looking behind me then, he was nowhere to be found. The rest of the way home, I kept glancing over my shoulder, always expecting to see his stupid smile. But he was never there. I lived in that city for six months after that night, and I never went out for another walk. There was something about his face that's always haunted me. He didn't look drunk. He didn't look high. He looked completely and utterly insane, and that's a very, very scary thing to see. Hello Reddit. I shared this story in fragments before but I've never written it out in full. 
During my junior year of high school, circa 2011, I was at my best friend's house. Nothing unusual, since we were constantly at each other's houses after school let out. I had been lounging in her room, waiting for her to come back since she had been gone for about an hour. She re-entered the room with a cordless phone in hand, saying that my dad wanted to speak to me. She appeared uneasy. My dad, I asked, baffled. You're probably thinking that the twist is that my father is dead, but nope. At the time, both of my parents frequently worked all day and were often out at night. It was possible for me not to see them for weeks. What really piqued our concern was that the person on the line called my friend's home phone number. Firstly, my parents never met her despite living so close and there was no way my father could have gleaned her number. Secondly, not even I knew her home phone number. Her mother picked up, hadn't thought anything of it, and sent her to courier the phone to me. I didn't want to take it for obvious reasons. She described the caller's voice as being guttural like an old man's, and she recognized that he didn't sound like my dad. He repeatedly asked, Is Charlie home? Which creeped us out immensely. Charlie was my nickname at school, one which neither of my parents called me or even knew about. Smartly, she replied no and hung up. We both acknowledged what the outcome would have been if she replied yes instead. This guy must have found out where I lived by watching us walk back and forth between our houses. He had been waiting to catch me alone at home. Even though I'd fortunately been at my friend's at the time, my 4 foot 9 100 pound sister was on her day off from work. The day afterwards, we interrogated all of our mutual friends at school. Maybe one of them was just messing with us. It wouldn't be the first time we prank called each other about something serious. None of them fessed up to the call. And we didn't find any reason to distrust them given the tone of the caller. Having been a foolhardy teenager, I didn't call the police or even inform my parents. I'd been a little afraid of telling them anything of the sort since I'd been blamed for being victimized before. Nothing happened to my sister, and we assumed it was just an isolated incident and a morbidly funny story to tell our friends. I had also been affectionately nicknamed the Nerd Magnet for my tendency to attract vaguely dangerous people, but that's a story for another time. Eventually, I moved to another neighborhood and never heard from the caller again. This story would have had a complacently boring ending if I hadn't googled my name some years later. Periodically, I search my name to see if any of my information appears on those person lookup sites, since I've become wary about being found since then. Instead, I stumbled upon an eight-chapter story on Quotev. The name of the first chapter, my first and last name. I wouldn't have been jarred if I had a commonplace name, but my last name is unusual for where I live. It was a sanguine teenage romance featuring me as the main character. The text boiled over with names of people I'd known throughout middle and high school, including my sisters. The only name I didn't recognize was my love interest, who was written as my childhood friend turned bullet. One part mentioned us being intimate, only for the same friend to call me and warn me about a strange car that had been parked in my driveway. Its final update was three years ago, eerily around the time I'd moved. Dad, let's not ever meet. Before anything, a little backstory. I was 10 at the time and was visiting my hometown in Ecuador for the summer. At the time, I knew just about everyone in my small little town of Lousy, and so did my parents, which is why they let me go on my own that day. Anyway, here's my encounter. Back when I was 10 years old, my family decided to take a visit to my hometown in Ecuador. We went for the summer and planned out just about our whole stay. One day, my mom and dad were getting ready to go to a wedding, and I was in the house with them. My big sister went over to a friend's house and my other relatives had already left for the wedding. I was supposed to stay at home alone for the duration, but I saw that it was a beautiful day out and decided to ask my mom and dad to go to a park. It was no more than two blocks away, but they were reluctant at first, saying that there'd be nobody to take care of me. But I argued that it was a beautiful day out and there was no way that the park would be empty. They kept getting dressed as I kept on arguing until they finally gave in. They said that I can go to the park as long as I was back before dark. I agreed and ran outside to head for the park. It took me no more than 10 minutes to get there and I was ready to make new friends and play around. But oddly enough, there was nobody else in the park. It looked abandoned, which was weird saying how oh, this is one of two parks in the whole city. It should have been packed, but I paid no mind to it. I believe I ran over to a swing set or slide, I can't remember, it was 12 years ago, and played around. As I played, I suddenly heard a voice from the distance. A clown was on the other side of a gate, motioning for me to get closer. Behind him was a white van, which I had noticed before, but I thought it was a delivery truck of sorts. I slowly started walking towards the clown and stopped a good distance away from him. He asked me in Spanish, Hey kid, do you like clowns? I nodded no to him and gave me that clown frown and said, Well then, 
Let me see if I can change that. He opened up his car, and by looking inside, I saw there was only two boxes, though I wasn't sure what they were filled with, and that was it. No seats, no posters, just those two boxes in complete emptiness. Being a child, I still paid no mind to it and watched as he pulled out a deflated balloon. He wrapped his lips around the end and blew till the balloon had fully inflated. He tied the end and started to form the balloon into a balloon animal of a dog. He showed it to me and I smiled. He then motioned to me to come closer, which I complied. He handed the balloon to me and said, Do you like? I nodded yes this time and gave him a little smile. He then grinned in the creepiest way possible. The grin was so creepy that even as a kid I knew to back away a bit. The clown then said that if I wanted to see the rest of his tricks I'd have to get into the truck. I told him that the exit was on the other side of the park and I wouldn't be able to climb the small gate. He then said the few words that haunt me to this day. Get a little closer and I'll carry you over. Then we can have loads of fun in my truck. Come on, kid. While saying this, he still had that creepy grin plastered across his face. I merely backed away and told him, No, it's okay, sir. His grin turned into anger as though he was annoyed at this. He placed his hands on his hips and said to me, Aw, but we're going to have so much fun. Right when he said that, I heard a voice on the other side of the park yelling, Son! Son! I'm here to pick you up! I turned and saw a man that I recognized as a local neighbor. He was not my real father, obviously, but the little me knew to run over to him. I said nothing to the clown. I just ran to the man and gave him a hug. The man waved to the clown and said, Thanks for keeping my kid entertained. To which the clown replied, No problem. As we turned around, I was able to hear this man murmur, Sick freak. I looked at him and asked, Sir, what exactly is going on? He gave a sigh and explained everything. As it turns out, there was no real clown. He was a man that had been kidnapping kids all across Ecuador. He would lure kids in with a clown costume and take them away to God knows what place. The people in my town had a feeling that he was coming to our town, which was why the whole park was deserted. He said he was walking by whenever he noticed I was talking to the clown and ran over to basically save me. As he told me this, he also dialed for the police to report the incident. We had arrived at my house finally and this man said, Be careful who you talk to, son. Not everyone is who they seem. I gave him one final hug and gave him a thanks for saving me from that sicko. He gave me a rub on the head and said, It's okay, my boy. Now hurry on, I have my own things to worry about. I nodded and ran in the house. Nobody was there and by the time they had returned, I decided not to tell anyone since I knew they'd flip out. It took a while to forget about the whole incident, especially those words that kept reminding me of him. But I soon forgot till I came across this page and memories of that clown flooded my head. I'm not quite sure what happened to that sicko, but hopefully he's now behind bars. Hopefully. So did that creepy clown from long ago? Let's not meet. I'm really sorry that it took me so long to upload this video, my fearful for you, but uh, I'm in a living situation that makes recording a bit difficult, and the last story was incredibly hard to record. I was also waiting for my new microphone to get here, and as you can probably tell, it sounds so much better than the headset mic I was using for the previous video. I'll try to set up a more consistent uploading schedule so you'll have plenty of content. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe, and if you'd like to have your own scary story future... Fe <laughs> If you'd like to have your own scary story featured in a future video, email me at the link in the description. Stay spooky, my friends.